there, I'm Maddie Harland from Permaculture Magazine and I am at the Seed Festival at Hawkwood House in Gloucester and I am with Sean Chamberlain and I just wanted to ask you today, you, you say something very deep about dark optimism, this sort of tautology, so tell me about first of all um, your capacity to envision a, a positive future and then the tension between that and actually how things are at the moment mm. and the kind of deep systemic change that we need. Ah, nice easy start of the turn, <laughs> huh? Um, well, I might take those back to front, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, as you say, my work goes on to this name of, of dark optimism. And for me, it's, it's being a bit fed up with, with kind of bright, shiny optimism. A um, bit fed up with people who are Facile almost. Yeah, I mean, everything's fine. Well, everything isn't fine, you know, I'm totally not. In some ways, I get more frustrated with people who think that everything's fine and we should just carry on as we are than I do with people who are completely overwhelmed by how, how difficult everything is. Um, and so it's that kind of darkness of acknowledging the situation that we're in, but then realizing that nonetheless, in that context, we can tell beautiful stories with our lives. So there's still, there's nothing about the present context that prevents us from making the world a better place, from working to improve the world we live in, from telling, yeah, telling stories we're proud with our lives. And the vision for that future for me is inevitably one that involves the end of economic growth, which is a huge challenge for our current cultural situation. Um, but we're in a situation where over the last 50 years we've lost the majority of the living creatures on earth, the, part, the mammals and birds and reptiles and amphibians, and that trajectory is transparently unsustainable. Uh, but what we forget about unsustainability is that it means, by definition, it's going to end. Um, so we know that we're on the cusp of radical change, like either we change direction or we end up where we're headed. And if we end up where we're headed, it's a, possibly a literal dead end. Um, and so, as you say, the question is then, what kind of stories can we, can we make real about a future that's built on relying on each other again, instead of relying on money? One where we're um, creating, you know, food and events and all kinds of joyous situations in which we get to remember what it is to be, to be humans that we're proud of again. Um, you know, I keep hearing this this sort of meme that humanity is a, a plague or a virus or a parasite and I think well I see why people are saying that because of what's unfolding on the planet and it's clearly driven by humanity but there are so many other ways to be human there are older cultures on this planet that have lived for hundreds of thousands of years without causing mass extinctions and runaway climate change so what we need to do is be, be more, more creative about our lives and look for wider influences. We were, we were born into a culture which is a culture of extermination in many ways. And we need to really challenge the fundamental cultural stories about what's important, what's meaningful in that culture, and figure out what it is to be, to make humanity something to be proud of again. And thank you. So what makes your heart sing? Because <laughs> It, 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 I, I almost, I feel like this is almost a really a deep mental health thing, is how do we build our psychological resilience in the face of extinction? And, and I love the, the ideas of Joseph Campbell and following your joy, and I just wondered, Sean, what makes your heart sing? Dancing. Yeah? Yeah, more than anything else, I love to dance. Um, that's, that's when I most, most come alive. And it's also when I most, um, most process difficult things, actually. Um, I mean, I, I was just giving a talk in the, uh, in the house there and was talking about how back in 2010, my, my late mentor, David Fleming, passed away very suddenly. And then just three weeks later, my, my fiance passed away very suddenly. So my whole kind of work world and my whole romantic world sort of disappeared in, in, in the blink of an eye, really. And um, dancing was so much what um, gave me a place where I could express things that I couldn't express in any other way, um, but also reminded me how good it is to be alive. Um, and I think, I mean, I, I had a friend who said something to me that really 
changed my life actually, which was that the best way that we can honour those that we love after their death is to keep alive what was best in them in the world through our own lives. Um, and you know, bringing David's books to publication after his death was, was, was one way that I did that. Um, and again, yeah, just finding ways to um, channel the grief that we often feel, not just on a personal level, but on a sort of ecological scale. Um, and recognizing that grief is, grief is actually a good thing, I think. You know, loss is a difficult thing, and in the, in the aftermath of loss, we tend to shut ourselves down and become quite numb. Mm. Grief is the process of kind of going and opening all those doors that we slammed shut against the pain. Mm. Um, and of course, behind every door is a wall of pain, because that's why we slammed it shut. But if we keep them shut, we stay numb, mm. and we stay kind of following the default path of our society, which, mm. which we really need to challenge. As we open those doors, we come back to life and we find that our, 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 our joy returns and we become yeah, fully human again in a really beautiful way. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So this is Permaculture Media YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Don't miss our regular weekly releases of films about all sorts of fascinating leading edge and visionary ideas and practices. Mm -hmm.